to worship. It's great to have you with us today, this beautiful day. The sun is out, the sky is blue, the birds are singing, and my neighbour has just stopped mowing. So it's a great time for us to worship. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that as we worship you today, as we sing your praise, as we listen to your word, we pray that we might encounter you, the living God, as we do the very thing you created us to do, which is to look to you, to honour you, and to know your word in our heart and in our lives. Amen. Amen. All creation gives you praise. You alone are truly great. You alone are God who So wherever you're watching from today, thanks so much for joining with us. We're going to use these simple words. God in Christ has revealed his glory. So come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun all the way to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. So give him praise, you servants of the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Well, our collect prayer for today is this. Almighty God, your Son has opened up for us a new and a living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. New hearts and constant wills. What a great prayer that is. So as we begin our time together, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Matt Redman and the All Souls Orchestra from the Royal Albert Hall as they encourage us to bless the Lord Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. 
have sung a lot of hymns tonight. My favourite hymn writer was Charles Wesley. In his very last hymn he wrote, age 81 on his deathbed, it says this. In age and feebleness extreme, who shall a helpless worm redeem? Jesus, my only hope thou art, strength of my failing flesh and heart. Oh, could I catch one smile from thee and drop into eternity? Does anyone feel that unshakable hope and love for Jesus Christ in this place tonight? Yes, on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws me and my time has come. Oh, Jesus, still my soul, sing your praise. my soul all that is within me bless his holy name as we come before God today let's just take a few moments in quiet and Lord as we come before you we pray that you would know our hearts Lord we recognize that even this week there's words that have come out of our mouths there's attitudes that we've held in our hearts that no one else can see but you Lord there's things that we've done that have knocked people down instead of pulling them up. Lord, we pray that as we say we're sorry for these things. Lord, we thank you that you would you promised to take those things and place them as far as the east is from the west. So would you renew our hearts today? Renew, remould, and remake us. And may you know God's forgiveness, God's healing, and God's peace and presence today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, Dave is going to read for us our first reading. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing, 
Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Wow, what encouraging words those are. And our second reading comes from Lady Vivian. Colossians 1, 15 to 28. He is the Im image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rules or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became a servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we pre proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's Rev Rob, our curate and our school chaplain who's going to be speaking to us today. So let's just pray. Father, we trust that what Rev Rob has prepared for us today, you've inspired his heart, Lord. You've spoken to him. So we pray that you'd give us open ears and soft hearts to what you would want to say to us today. Lord, may we truly hear from you, we pray. Amen. Thanks, Rob. Hi, everyone. If you've read the Gospels or heard something of them, you'll perhaps have come to an understanding that Jesus actually came to turn the world upside down. So one evening in December 1955, Rosa Parks was famously on a bus on the way home from work. And then in accordance with the, the racial segregation laws of the city of Montgomery, Alabama, she was occupying a seat in the designated coloured section. And when the whites only area filled up, the bus driver told Rosa and those sitting beside her to give up their seats so that white passengers could sit down. Now three of those passengers got up, but Rosa, she refused. Her defiant action was to prove a key moment in the, in the post-war civil rights movement. In a segregated world where you sit or continue to sit, you can actually bring around a new order. So in the ancient world, segregation was also an everyday reality. Not only was there a strong divide between the public and private spheres, but private dwellings. They were also distinctly compartmentalised. Houses were built around a central courtyard, which was open to the streets, and people could walk straight in. Now this area, it was traditionally designated for the male members of the household and their guests. So then, unlike today's houses, in which family members move freely from room to room, from one to another, it were private and secluded quarters for women and slaves. 
So where the division of people meant the division of roles, largely hidden from public view. Women and slaves were traditionally associated with serving men. Men could be expected to be served. The story of Martha and Mary has often interpreted as a reminder that in Christ we are saved by faith. Represented by Mary who sits at the feet of Jesus and not by works. Represented by Martha who rushes around. Alternatively, the story is sometimes thought to affirm the, the importance of contemplation over activity. But how might the scripture speak to us if we were to read it in relation to the segregated world in which Mary and Martha lived? We find Jesus in the public part of the house where guests would traditionally be received. Although it is Martha who has invited Jesus. She has evidently withdrawn and, and Luke presents her frantically engaged in traditional acts of service, providing for the guests' needs. Mary, however, is not serving alongside her sister, but defying cultural traditions by sitting at Jesus' feet in the public area. It's a startling picture. Martha is very uncomfortable. With a male guest in the home, Mary's rightful place surely is in the hidden parts of the house, in the kitchen perhaps, with Martha. In his response to the sisters, Jesus overturns the traditional divides, casting aside the traditional male privilege of receiving female service as his due. Jesus recognises Martha's distress. Whereas in the other gospel stories, Jesus suggests that his male disciples don't serve others enough. Here, addressing the other side of the gender divide, Jesus recognises that Martha is burdened by attempting too many acts of service. So meanwhile, Jesus affirms Mary's right to stay seated where she is, here in the public place, the masculine area of the house, sitting at Jesus' feet. Mary is listening attentively, as though at worship. She's chosen the rightful part, inclusivity instead of segregation. This passage speaks powerfully about the nature of the church. When the early church met in believers' houses, it was in the central public space where it gathered. The early church was considered by outsiders to be a revolutionary community, defiantly drawing people together in contrast to a world that preferred to keep them very much apart. At the parable of the Good Samaritan, which precedes this episode, this story offers us a picture of the inclusive nature of God's love. No one is excluded from the church on the grounds of race, class or gender, because in Christ, God has reconciled all things to himself. Traditional divides are overturned. One section of the church has not to be made invisible or exist to serve the others. All are to serve each other in mutual submission because all belong together. So today's scripture reminds us that Christian believing is not simply a matter of private, personal spirituality to be hidden away in a far corner, but is to be lived out in all the contexts of our lives. God's inclusive love is nothing less than a public matter, something to be shouted about from the rooftops, made visible for all to see. In a world of divides, threatened by fears and hatreds of all kinds, we have good news to proclaim. But of course, what we shout about has to be a lived reality. We cannot proclaim the inclusivity of the gospel and living comfortably with division. If divides are to be overcome, we shall need to recognise the fears we carry in our hearts and the injustices 
we perpetuate in traditions and structures, confessing them all humbly and honestly. We shall need to sit at Jesus' feet, listening attentively, learning from him and just ways of relating. And like Rosa Parks, we shall need to find the quiet strength to stay sitting there, no matter what, flatly refusing to move away. Thanks so much, Rob. Let's just take a few moments to just think about all that we've heard today. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to apply your word, Lord, from our hearts to our lives and to our choices, we pray. Amen. We're going to sing that lovely song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ In Me. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and
So shall we pray together. Father, this day we are aware of so many needs in our world. And we thank you, God, for your promise that when we speak with you, when we pray to you, that you hear our prayers. So, Father, we pray for our world. We continue to pray for Russia and Ukraine and indeed other areas of the world where there is war and unrest. Father God, we pray for leaders, for people who influence others and have the power to make decisions. Lord, we pray that peace and justice would reign. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our own country, for our own government, for all that is going on in the leadership race at the moment. Father, would you give us the leaders, give us the government that we need. Lord, we pray that Christian values and principles, Lord, would permeate the decisions of Whitehall. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray closer to home. We pray for our own city of Stoke-on-Trent. Perhaps in a moment, why not pray for the street where you live and the people that you share life with? And Lord, as we hold these people before you, Lord, we thank you that you know every heart, you know every situation, you know every family, you know every soul. And Lord, we bring to you people that are on our hearts. Father, would you use us to be carriers of your love and your presence into their lives? Lord, for those that are struggling and suffering and ill and unwell, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would meet them at their point of need. Lord, that you would bring your healing and your restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today our friends from Kingsland School are going to lead us. Do join in in the words of the Lord's Prayer. So as we draw our time to a close, may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and in love and defend you on every side and then guide you in his truth and his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Have a great day, folks, and see you soon. For your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead.